Lori. What's up, everybody? If you're around, join me. Love to have you. This is all about preparing for the new year that's coming. And a lot of times we decide to let something go as the new year approaches. And if you have never participated in something called dry your wary, where you give up something for the month of January, usually alcohol, I'm going to talk more about what that looks like and offer you some ideas about this whole concept that the title is, is overcoming you to embody the true you. And so letting go of all the resistance to what you truly desire. So say hello if you're there. And I'm going to get this shared real quickly. And we will boogie on down the street. Okay, so sweet. Okay, so this past Monday, I had the opportunity to have dinner with one of my favorite local authors, and she and I were talking about writing, and she asked me what it is that I write about. And my initial response, immediate response, I should say, was that I write about overcoming me. And so it made me think about all the things that we hear about having to overcome things, you know, overcoming perhaps a loss. Maybe it's a, a loss of a job, a loss of a friend, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a partner. Or we hear about overcoming, you know, our attachment, not our attachment, we hear about overcoming grief or overcoming heartbreak, whatever it might be, overcoming a financial challenge. And what came to me as I was talking about overcoming me with this author was that's what it's really about. It's so curious when you're willing to explore a little bit deeper is that it really isn't about the person, the situation, the circumstances or the thing that we truly need to overcome. So it isn't the alcohol or the drugs or the food or the job or the, the man or the woman or whatever it is. It's our own attachment to those things, and more importantly, what we make it mean about us. That's what we really are here to learn to let go of. Because often when we're in a difficult period of our life and we're learning, you know, willfully or not so willfully, this whole process, hey, sorry, my dog is deciding to eat my glasses. <laughs> what you will discover is it really, is about the story we have created about what it means. And so often we make it mean, you know, if we lose a, a partner or a job or we're having some financial troubles or career difficulties, whatever it might be, a relationship struggles, it's not that we need to overcome it. It's that we need to learn or, in the, or be willing to learn how to let go of the story we created about ourselves because often that story is not a very nice story. So often that story can be that, you know, you you were ridiculous to get involved with that person in the, in the first place. You saw the red flags, you were stupid, you were um, crazy, you were worthless, you are, you can't be trusted. And so when we start to tell ourselves that, like, oh my gosh, you're right, I can't trust myself. I always choose the wrong guys, or I always choose the wrong jobs, or, I always make bad decisions or I'm terrible at making decisions. Whatever story it is that you're creating, that's really where the, the growth comes more than it is learning about, oh, you know, I just need to take, you know, four to six weeks off from sugar or alcohol or from, the, from you know, do some social media detox, whatever it might be. It's not necessarily those things, the social media, the alcohol, drugs, chocolate, whatever relationships, it's, again, your attachment to what it means about you. And so when you're willing to explore and do some self-inquiry and discovery, then you get to choose, perhaps that isn't the story you want to continue to live, that you made the best decision at the time, and now, of course, you're in a different place and you've grown and you've learned and now you will make different decisions. And most important part that I want to leave you with that you can use from this period going forward, if you notice, especially as we come to the end of the year, a lot of times we feel a lot of heaviness or disappointment. We haven't progressed as much as we had hoped or we're not where we want to be. And so if you can ask yourself, you know, what is the story I have about where I'm supposed to be at this point and 
who says? And what am I making that mean? That I'm not where I'm supposed to be, quote unquote. Because often we start to play the role of like, of course, we think we can control everything and that our life is supposed to be the way we want it to be and that we can play God and make it all happen. And when it doesn't, that's when we get upset and get discouraged and start to maybe spiral into a little bit of our old patterns, which then make us feel even worse. And so instead, here's a great tool for you to use is to ask yourself as if you were asking as if you were asking yourself from the outside. So you're the object, objective observer and key here being objective and non-judgmental and compassionate and caring and curious. And so kindly ask yourself, you know what? There must have been a really good reason that you got involved with that person or that you took that job or that you accrued so much debt. You know, it must be really hard and I'd really, I'd really like to hear what, about what that is. And the key here is you're not asking because you want to fix yourself. You're not asking necessarily really with a desire. You don't necessarily have to understand. And this is the, the key point is detaching because we sometimes go down deep. We want to understand. We want to understand. We want to find the solution and dig into our past. And then we just end up staying stuck in the past. And so if you can release yourself to say, wow, that must be really hard and let yourself feel that there's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. You don't need fixing. You just had some very good reasons for whatever it was that you went through. And now you're in a place where you can share those reasons without judgment or guilt or shame. And when you do that, you release <laughs> all the guilt and shame. And then you are able to move forward from a very different place, from a place of, oh yeah, I am okay. And I am capable of making good, good decisions and I can be trusted. And really, I do know somewhere what is right for me. When I let go of all my resistance and let go of all the stories, then I can truly see and trust I know the way forward. So I would love to hear your comments if you're there. And also wanted to share a super cool thing that I'm offering. So I have done for the last three or four years, starting in 2015. So I think I skipped a year. So I did three years of the last four years where I did four to six weeks of the first part of the year, just taking a break from something, whether that's alcohol, social media, sugar, coffee, gluten. And it could be not necessarily of substance. It could also be an activity. So maybe it's, you know, I'm letting go of procrastination at least for four to six weeks, or I'm letting go of attaching myself to this job and I'm committing myself to looking for a new job. So it's really starting to incorporate this idea of a new year, a new opportunity. And at the same time, having support and guidance in that four to six week period. Because when I did it by myself, there were times where I would have loved to have had some guidance and support because when you let go of something, especially, or you commit to something, that's when all the resistance comes and that's when it becomes even more difficult to hold on to that commitment. And so having the support and guidance of someone who's been there and a group of other people who are also committed to, to whatever it is, if it's giving up something or starting something new, that you have this container within which to really commit to you, basically, and to have someone to guide you when you meet those gremlins as they come out full force or go through a little bit of physiological distress, distress as, you, as you let go of something and psychological sort of challenges as you let go of something. Anyway, all that to say, <laughs> it is a new kind of dry January. So if you're interested in learning more, please send me a PM. And so what it looks like, it's four to six weeks of support where we will do a call on Mondays to kind of set the intention for the week, check in, do a Wednesday question and answer, and then on Fridays, check in again, have time for meditation and visualization and, and letting go of any you know struggles that may have happened and reaffirming your commitment going forward, as well as having time to check in with other people in the program. And of course, I have tons of tools and resources that I've used to share to ensure you're successful. So that kicks off on January 1st at 9 a.m. and it is a super deal. It's only $2.97, so less than $10 a day, which is less than two coffees, 
or a sandwich these days. So if you're interested in that, send me a PM and you can get in, um, enrolled in that. And I would love to have you because committing to something new or letting go of something old is not always that fun and it's not always the easiest thing to do on your own. So, hi, hi May. So let me know and I will send you out more information as I get it. I haven't, de I hadn't decided if I wanted to do a sales page or not, but I might just so you can find out more information. And until then, of course, you can just send me a PM and I'll give you all the details. Thank you all so much for being here and talk to you soon.